I'm very friendly. If you feel inspired to move forward as we go through the talk, please do so. Um, I am going to talk a lot about LinkedIn. I do have slides. I'm happy to share them afterwards. I just need you to be my business card because I'm not telling you. Um, second thing, so as, as Greg mentioned, I do a lot of work with entrepreneurs, with executives, people in career transition, really about your personal brand. So what's your reputation? How are you conveying that? And how are you doing it in a way on LinkedIn that you stand out? So what we'll talk about today is what makes you stand out? How do you measure that and know if it's working? What is it about you that needs to show up on the profile? And then how do you share and engage on LinkedIn in a way that's meaningful and authentic and not just here? How many people have a LinkedIn profile? Yay, okay. How many people log in once a month? Or more, me. Or, more. or less. Okay. How many of you log in once a week? How many of you log in once a day? How many of you actually do something every day on LinkedIn besides logging in? Okay, so that's, that's okay. All right. Well, some people are like, yeah, I logged in, and I'm like, did you, did you do anything? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go through, through some things that you can actually leverage to do on LinkedIn. I do have some exercises. You have a worksheet. Um, I believe when you come somewhere, you should come with a worksheet so you can leave with actionable insights and do something. If you have questions, and I asked some of you what you're looking forward to for the session today, just raise your hand and ask. Um, there is no stupid question when it comes to LinkedIn. I've heard everything, so please ask away. Uh, so where do I want to start? Uh, first of all, I don't know how many of you are on social media, but if you're not, just to give you a grounding, like what is LinkedIn, why is it different? Facebook is really the water cooler. That's much more personal. That really is very separate. Unless you have a business page, you really want to keep that unique, distinct, and different. I would put everything on private. If you don't know how to make your settings private, let me know. If you don't care, that's okay too. Um, but sometimes you don't want people to find you. Oh, Whoops. That was very dark. <laughs> oh, I can't. I, I'm not getting her now. I'm shiny, but not much. Would you, uh, I need a light on her. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, LinkedIn really is the boardroom. So I have seen LinkedIn start to turn a little bit more like Facebook where people feel inclined to share lots of things and perspectives. I would encourage you to keep it professional and make sure you keep it polite. It really is a business space. Now one thing you may not know is there are over 500 million users on LinkedIn. That's why it is such a powerful platform. The other thing people think, and someone in the audience who shall remain nameless, thought LinkedIn wasn't very valuable. Here's where it's valuable. Most people don't know that about 40% of all the activity on LinkedIn is job search. 60% of it is networking, sharing thought leadership, reading content and engaging, right? So when you think about why LinkedIn, there's a large portion of activity on LinkedIn that's actually not about the job search. It's really about an online networking platform that has a ton of power that you just wouldn't normally have um, if it were only a job search tool. But a lot of people 10 years ago, yes, it was very much a job search tool. Now, not so much. It's turned into a lot more, which I think is very cool. Twitter is a little bit like bursts of news. Um, I like Twitter, but it's a lot of energy to maintain. So that's why I would say stick to LinkedIn for the job search. Think, same thing for Instagram, unless your search is really about building an influencer brand and using pictures to tell that story. You really just want to stay on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, everybody talks about using social media. Kind of think of LinkedIn as its own thing. When I think of social media for personal use, I really do think about Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. LinkedIn is really its own entity, its own business platform. Um, obviously, feel free to, to disagree, but when I think of social media, LinkedIn really is a different level. So one of the things that you may or may not know, um, there is a new button that came out more than a year ago where you can say that you're interested and you're looking for a career. Hopefully, you have all checked that. If you have not, I would encourage you to do so. It's very simple. When you log in and you go to your profile page, you'll see a thing that says, oh, are you looking? Now, the reason they made this private is because otherwise, how would you be able to look if you were employed? Because your employer would be like, oh, you're looking. But this is really important because recruiters can use this to identify you very quickly. So make sure that you've got this turned on that says you're looking for career opportunities. And like I said, I'll share these slides with you, um, but just so you know. And then what you can do is you can put in what titles are you looking for? What location are you looking for? 
you can give them a lot more information so it's easier to be found. So I just share that. Um, I think it's pretty cool. You can also put in there if you want to do freelance, if you're open to 1099, if you want to work part-time, and which industries, and what size of company. So there's a lot of great information that you can include. Has anybody done this? I was just going to ask, is that, you said when you log, like I logged in today. Yeah. Maybe I missed that. No, no, that's okay. Um, so where are you would go, and I'll just show you real quick. And I'm going to bounce between these just because I think it's important. When you log in and you go to your profile, where it shows up is in this section here. Career advice, career interests. Oh, okay. So you can turn on you can turn that on. I'm giving career advice, so that's on for me. Here's the yeah. career interests oh, okay. interest okay. and being recruited. Okay? <laughs> that is up to you. Um, if you want to have people reach out to you and ask for advice, then do that. If you don't want people <laughs> to do that, then don't. <laughs> um, I haven't had that many people reach out, to be honest, and ask, but, uh, but that is a cool feature. <laughs> so this is what that looks like. Career interests. Um, that's what you turn out. The other thing I want to point out, and I'm going to go into this a little bit more detail. How many of you look at your dashboard and look at your metrics? Okay, so enough that I'm going to go over this. So when you look at your dashboard, this is how many people viewed your profile in the last 90 days. Okay, nine. 90. 90. Three months. 90 days. This is how many people viewed the last thing you posted on LinkedIn. And this is how many times you've showed up in search in the last week. So there are disparate numbers that are measuring different time frames, but these can be really good metrics if you're just trying to figure out, am I doing something that's working? Right? Am I actually showing up on people's radar? Do the views of 90 days the posts are the last thing you posted? So in this particular one, I think I wrote a blog, and so I had this many views on the blog. Yes. Should we be concerned if we don't have numbers like that? Uh, so I am a business yeah. owner, and I am actively on LinkedIn once a day, connecting with people or posting articles or giving recognition. I have clients who start off with this being 10 and 5 and 0, right? What I would say, and this is where LinkedIn is really powerful, is if you ease into it, I don't want you to go be like, Jen said I have to post every day. If you haven't been doing that, don't start with doing that, because people are going to be like, whoa, what's going on? I would ease into a little bit, right? Post one thing a week, and then maybe next month, post two things a week. And I'll go into that in more detail, but it's okay if you don't have numbers like these. The thing is, I've worked with clients where they've gone from 10 to 50 in two weeks, and consistently increased. So as long as you have a plan for what you're putting on LinkedIn, you can actually move these numbers pretty quickly. Great question. <clears throat> Don't be nervous. This was a good day or a good week. Oh, uh, it's your profile, right? This is my profile. It's why it's all, right? And you look yep. correct. I'm not, I'm not interested in being a word. Okay, so, but you look at the turn it on, right? I would turn it on. Okay. And my parents still try to get me to go back to work. They would probably like me to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I keep telling them, no, no, I'm a business owner. <laughs> so this is what it's telling you, right? So who's viewed your profile? So you can actually go and look at who's viewed your profile. How many are on free, LinkedIn free? Okay, so on free, you can really only see three or four people. Once your profile is really working for you and you feel confident and you want people to come to it, you might wanna consider doing a premium, try free for a month, but you should do that and then actually be doing stuff on LinkedIn. And if you're seeing these numbers move and you're seeing people come look at your profile that are who you want to be looking at your profile, that's a good thing. Well, the cheapest version of LinkedIn is $29.99, that is the job search. And that would allow you to see up to 200 people. So if you're actively looking, or if you're actively pursuing clients or whatnot, this is where you absolutely want to make sure you're seeing who's coming to your profile. Yes? So I did sign up for the premium for um, a month that was free. I think it's $59.99, so I didn't really see that it was worth it, but I, I didn't see this job search for $29.99. Okay. Um, let me email you where that is. LinkedIn was bought by Microsoft and they are changing lots of things, yeah. and so it wouldn't surprise me if they're also changing pricing. 
but I've seen it in the last month where, it, where it's definitely been there. Um, so I will follow up with Post view, so this is something I wrote. So in that middle section, it's just telling me that this particular post has 658 views. How many of you read something every day? Like an article. <laughs> so if you're on LinkedIn and you find an article in your field that is interesting, and you share it, and you tag the author or you tag the publication, that can give you free marketing, okay? This takes a little bit of time. It's not gonna happen overnight. But these are things you can, muscles you can build. And so these are things that the search matters. The reason you wanna see search, and you do have to have premium to really get more out of that, um, is we'll tell you which keywords are helping you be found. So you'll know if your profile is coming up based on the keywords that people would be using to find you. So for digital marketing, or if it were biotech, if you're, at least if you're coming up for marketing, something's not right. Or if you're coming up for manufacturing, something's not right. Right, my keywords, entrepreneur, speaker, executive coach, women's entrepreneur, business strategist, those are all the keywords I want. So this is a uh, report that you get with me. It's not a report, well, it's a, it's a page you can go look at, and I'll show it to you later, but it's a page you can go look at. So you can see, well, how are people finding me? How many of you use Google? Come on, y'all, I know y'all do. <laughs> LinkedIn is very much like that. It has a very powerful search tool and background. When executive recruiters are looking, they're using keywords to find you. Okay? They're looking for marketing or CFO or whatever those titles are that you might be interested in, which is why your profile needs to have the right keywords. Okay? All right, so um, premium. If you are paying for premium, you do get to use in-mails. You do move up in search, which is a very nice thing. You used to be able to have a bigger profile, but that's not the case anymore. Um, you can see as many people that come and look at your profile. So I would encourage you to think about how are you, when you're ready, use premium, because it really can boost your search results and make it easier for you to be found. You are paying to move up. Yes? What did you say, um, in-mail was? Uh, was that in-mail? Yes. Great question. So when, uh, so let's say Greg and I are connected, that's a first connection. Let's say Kate is friends with Greg. Kate is a second connection. What's your name again? Natasha. Natasha. If Natasha is connected with Kate, she's a third connection. If you're connected with Natasha, I don't know you, I'm not connected with you, or even potentially Kate, I have to use an email. It's like a secret passcode to be able to be introduced to you. So I get a, a free letter to reach out to you even though we're actually not connected. Yeah. Okay. So you get a certain number of emails per month, depending on which platform or package you're on. Right. So when you are going to reach out and do an email or do a uh, introduction, I'm gonna give you some thoughts on how to do that. What I would say typically, unless you're, typically I would say you don't reach out and ask for a job the first time you reach out to someone. Right. You really want to reach out and say, hey, I saw your profile, I saw this article, I thought you might be interested in reading it, you know, we're in the same industry, something like that. If you're asking for a job right away, people probably won't answer. If they do, it's because they're a good human being. Because <laughs> 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 most people don't have time to help you find a job, right? right? But if you're providing value and you're just grabbing coffee and learning more about the industry or their company or whatever, those are great ways to leverage LinkedIn and reach out. Mm. Doesn't mean everyone has that experience, but that tends to be my philosophy. Uh, this is just a, it's a social selling index. You have it on the worksheet. You can just see how well you're doing in the profile, how well your profile is doing on LinkedIn's assessment. Um, and it compares you within your industry and then also within your broader network. It's out of 100. What um, exactly is the ratio up? What I would do is actually research social selling index and on Google or you can do it on LinkedIn. It's a button you have to, you go to their website and you click and it does the assessment. It's not like it's straight from your profile. It's not premium. Great question. I wish they had a little button. Yeah, I thought, that's why I asked that question. You think, yeah, yeah, there's not an easy one. So that's why I wrote it on the worksheet because it's, um, it's not I a have a sort of question, Tom, yeah. but you're probably getting to that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Which is the, the kind of the, the merits of the quality of people searching versus just the volume of searching. Maybe that's the premium route. That's the benefit of going the premium route. Because obviously volume, uh, both would, would be good, right? Having high volume of searching, but 
but it's you just mean people. showing up in search a lot? Yeah, yes. but it's just people that are just finding me, but I don't feel like I have. I, don't, I can't see what the value is, or it's not. A lot of there. people just want to have connections so they can get more visibility. So they may not even send me an invitation to connect. They just want to connect so they can have five more connections or more. Uh, generally, if someone doesn't give me a personalized introduction, I'm not going to connect with them. Yeah, that's the way right? I feel too. If it's somebody I don't even know. Right. Now, yeah. if there's somebody who you could work with or could help, you get to decide if you want to do that, right? Because connections, that's your choice. You get to decide how open or closed you want your network to be. If you only connect with people you physically met, that kind of defeats the purpose of having 500 million plus people on LinkedIn, right? Now, some people are very adamant, I'm only connecting with people I meet. That's cool. That's a personal choice. Um, but if you're trying to, like I had the chief customer experience officer at Verizon reach out to me this morning to connect. Yeah, I think I will. <laughs> I go connect with them. I'm like, okay. Um, so there are times where certain relationships that you want to nurture or you think they could help you or you could help them, I would connect. I have had people reach out or I'll reply back and go, gosh, how can I help you? I'll be understand what you're looking for in my network, especially if I want to vet them more. But there are a lot of people I never connect with. So so that connection that you're talking about right now with the Verizon, would that be one of the end mails that you're talking about? Um, he, I don't think he had to because we have 40 people in common. Okay. Right. So he could just reach out and connect with me. Okay. So the end mails is people that are remote to you. For people that are, think of it like Kevin Bacon, the set, six degrees of separation. Uh -huh. If people are more than three degrees separated and you don't have any connection with them, okay. then you would use an email. Yeah. Yeah. I've been waiting to talk about Kevin Bacon. When you reached out to the invitation from Adam, written a sentence or two or comment, some, some replies I get back is so and so wants to start a conversation. Right. Is that generated because you didn't do the introduction notes or what? So how, why is that generated? Because I don't see it all. Sometimes people will send a message but not do a connection request and I'll start mm -hmm. off with a message. Like, hey Jen, I saw you speak. I would love to connect with you. Right. Depending on where I go on LinkedIn, I'll be able just to accept their connection. Mm -hmm. But when I respond, yeah. um, that stands in for an acceptance. Okay. So whatever you do right now, on the top of your worksheet, I want you to think about the three things you are an expert at and are trying to be known for. This is your personal brand. Okay, so this is overarching. You can see the examples I have up here. They're a blend of EQ or emotional intelligence and IQ, so a hard skill. If you are in pharma or sales, that might be one of your circles. If you are in Let's say you do a lot of financial statement analysis. That's not my circle, by the way. Um, then you might have that. But you want to think about what are the key words, what are the strengths you're trying to be known for. So take a minute and write down some of those strengths. The reason I ask you to do this is because you cannot be known for everything on LinkedIn. You really want to pick the lane you're in. But you want to do it clearly. Can you give me some more examples? Sure. Can you tell me what you do? I'm a city planner. You're a city planner. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> what are some of the strengths that you bring to your bring to a career? Whether are you going to stay in city planning or do something different? Well, I would say project management and sales. Those would be my top three. Project well. management, yeah. sales, mm -hmm. and then what's the third one? City planning. Yeah. So that is that like a good set? Or um, more? So project management. So tell me more about that. What are you good at? I'm good at everything. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say city planning as far as like basically developing cities, developing communities, developing networks, transportation. That's city planning. That's what I'm good at. So you. So I think in that particular case, because that is your domain, that I would definitely put that in there. So for now, let's put city planner, city planning. For project management, mm -hmm. is that more about knowing how the pieces move and how they all intersect and interact? It's more about having a schedule. So timely, timely people, structure, structure, money, people where they need to be, budget. Yeah. 
That's so much better than just project management, right? Yeah. So I don't see. I I call it that, but I know that's not what I don't need to use that word because it's right, getting right. me off in the wrong lane. But that's what yes. I do. So if yours is about um, delivering complex and high value projects. Well said. I never said that that way, but thank you. <laughs> no problem. You will not see a surprise in this in the mail. Um, so just working on like some high value projects. And what's your third one? So sales. Money, sales. Okay. What about sales? Being able to sell anything to anybody. Close projects. How? Design. Blah, blah, blah. How do you sell? How do I sell? By okay. listening to what you want and oh, giving you what you want. So you listen to. Me. I listen to you. I do. And then do you influence me? I try not to. You just influence yourself by what I say. You make up your own mind. Okay. So you listen to inform and help move people forward. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. I'm so glad I asked. No problem. It's, um, it's important to try to be teacher that they can do. Try to listen <laughs> to help inform and move people forward, or help them make better decisions, right? I help them make. make I help make their life better. Yeah. Improve their life. That's what I try to do. Okay. And then city planning, is that, what's really unique about that? What skill are you using when you're doing that? I'm using my heart control skills as far as design, space, okay. volume. And is that? Um, Moving one thing to another place. Do you have to understand how people live and work? Yeah, people live and work, but it affects their transportation. It's usually transportation, circulation, space, uh -huh. um, relationships as far as getting from A to B. What is design. a good city design to do? How does it make people feel? Makes them feel happy. Okay. Yeah. So design, um, do you design or do you implement? What's that? Do you design and implement? Both. Okay. So design and implement happy city. Any more coffee, or I mean, <laughs> No, it's perfect. That's exactly what I do. I use the word happy, fun, for Yeah, embrace it. Took me a while to realize happy was a, not a bad word. <laughs> 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 We're not really trained. Most people aren't happy. happy. Yeah, yeah. I am. So when you think about these things, these are the things that make you way more interesting than the first three you said. Sales, project management, city planning. These are compelling. If I came to your LinkedIn profile and saw some of these, I would want to get to know you more. Each of you are way more interesting than you give yourself credit for. Sometimes we just need different words to convey. Okay? Thank you, David. And I'm going to come back to those three circles. And if you want to talk about your three circles with me, I'd be happy to uh, at another time. Okay, so let's talk about the profile. So one of the things that you can do with some of these words, not all of them. So this is the top box, right? It takes six seconds to make a great impression. So the banner at the top, that can be customized. You could put in there a picture of maybe a city design. You could put in there a picture of the industry you're looking to work in. You could put in there, if you're trying to move, a banner of the city you're trying to go to. But that picture is your brand. It's that first impression. If you have the blue banner with the little dots and the lines, that's just the standard LinkedIn banner. You can change that, okay? Oh, those are options that LinkedIn gives you or you have to create it yourself? Great question. So I created mine myself. And the website I would recommend is canva.com. It's free, and you can, they have a LinkedIn banner the size of someone's wonky, so just play around with it a little bit. That is a technical term, wonky. Um, these are a couple of images that I put in there, okay? So that I blended. Now you can also do it in PowerPoint, <coughs> and just save your PowerPoint slide as a JPEG, and upload your picture that way if Canva makes you too nervous because it's a whole new website. Um, but Canva's really awesome. The other thing I would say, so this is your title underneath. This counts for a lot of keyword weight. So if you think of a search formula and LinkedIn is searching fields, then you probably do want to put in here things like city planner, right? City planner for happy cities, right? Like there are things that you may decide to include that give some context and tell a story. But let's face it, they also need to have the keyword people are going to be looking for. Right? Whether it's financials, whether it's biotech, whatever business you're in, you need to have something here. 
So I have reputation strategist, I have my title, build a personal brand that cuts through the noise. So it's got the keyword brand in there. LinkedIn expert, speaker, and author. Because those are things I want people to find me on. I've had people find me to come speak just through my LinkedIn profile. This title section is 120 characters. I would encourage you to think about what would you put in there? Whether it's pieces of your three circles, maybe it's different phrases. You don't want to just stuff mm -hmm. it with words. You want it to be readable. Does that make sense? Okay. Questions on this one? So that little pencil up in the top right is where you can edit all of this. They've started to change the format a little bit now where you can go in and edit things a little bit differently, but that's generally what you'll find. You do want to have more than 500 plus connections that moves you up in search. If you're below 500, you will not move up in search as much. Just, uh, just something to share. The other thing, how many of you have a professional headshot? Professional like, headshot? Like, if someone like, paid someone to take it for you? Or? How many of you have a headshot that looks professional? <laughs> Congratulations, you were able to barter and make that happen. Headshots are really, really important. They make that first impression. You want it to be approachable. If you haven't gotten yours yet, I would get one with a couple of different outfits so you can use them interchangeably if you need to. Do you have a question, Lisa? I did, because I had a question about the um, the number of um, connections. Uh -huh. So I do understand that, but what I find that a lot of times is that people have connections, um, but those connections aren't necessarily connected to them or <coughs> have a vested interest in them. So for instance, I've seen people with 500 plus connections and then they initiate an article or something and they get no likes or anything like that. And so I've tried to be a little bit more um, contemplative as far as connecting to people and trying to, you know, forge a relationship so Absolutely. that we can support. So, I mean, you know, I've been taking my time and as I meet people at different, you know, functions and stuff like that, Perfect. connecting to them. So I don't know, that might be putting me at a disadvantage for the recruiting piece, but. So I think uh, a lot, I kill a lot of our hello comments. Um, I love that you connect with people after events. I think that's huge. I think it's very important to remember when you go to connect with them to do a personalized introduction. Write a note. You can do that on the LinkedIn mobile app as well. It's just a little bit trickier to find. But send a personalized note, right? Remind them, it was lovely meeting you last night. I really enjoyed hearing you talk about your trip to Antarctica. I look forward to having coffee soon. Should you need anything in the meantime, please don't hesitate to reach out. Right? So think about how are you making those personalized connections. Um, before you go to an event, if there's someone who's going to be speaking, reach out to them ahead of time. I'm really looking forward to hearing you speak on this panel. Hopefully we get to chat for a few minutes afterwards, but if not, good luck. Okay. Those are really great ways to reach out on purpose, without reason. Huh? Uh, are my headshots done with a professional photographer? Is that what you mean? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and the price range really varies, right? It can be anywhere from $125 to uh, $4,000. So if anybody here needs a referral for headshot photographers, I have a couple. I'm happy to make that intro. Some of the career groups in the area will, a few times a year, provide free uh, we'll bring professionals in to give for, uh, headshots for free. Yeah, absolutely. Who does that? The Career Network Ministry. They meet in uh, Tyson's area. Oh, okay. I think they're like four times a year. That's a great point. Yes. Yeah, and, and the other thing, Jen, um, in terms of headshots, I went to Women in Technology job yes. there, and they had someone there, They're awesome and it was $20. Yeah. So you you know. can find it. It really just depends. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but I would look and try to find if there are events going on where you can get that taken care of. Sure. Um, but it's worth it's worth in gold. And I think CNM is having it this week on Tuesday, oh. I think. That, that's how they've done that. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. OK. So one of the reasons you want to have a profile that looks like you're a human, <laughs> you want people to actually have somewhere to go. Like, what should they do when they get there? They want to learn about you. So this is my summary. Um, it's a little bit lengthy, but these are, this does not happen. You actually have to go write it and put it in your profile. My recommendation for you would be to break it up into three paragraphs. Break out your why. Why is it that you're in the space you're in? What is it that you love about the industry? Maybe start off with some interesting fact. Maybe start off with um, 
it could be a bit more emotional if you want, but you can keep it fact-based. Like Thomas Jefferson, I think this is a true fact if I remember my reading correctly. Thomas Jefferson was one of our first city planners. He decided to have cities be 30 miles apart. Once I heard that, I knew I was hooked. I love making cities where people can be happy. Right? So think about something interesting that's not just, I've been in this for over 20 years, blah, 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 blah. It's in the very top. Um, so I'll show you, uh, once I get through a couple of these, mm -hmm. I'll get through a profile and show you guys where all of these are. Um, but it's at the very top. That's where you put it. When you, where you edit your banner and your headshot, the summary is in there. So I would do your why, I would do your what. So I would list out three projects that you're really proud of or list out the type of work that you do. I usually write this in Word and I'll do round bullets because those will actually copy paste into LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is kind of a pain when you're wanting to put bullets in there, except for in the blog post. And then the how. How do you work with people? I'm a team player. I love listening to people. I love meeting them where they're at. I love working on a team that loves culture. My goal is to work with people who have awesome ideas. I love collaboration. How do you work with people? And then you can think about your specialties, which usually is aligned by itself, where you can put in five to 10 of those keywords we were talking about earlier. Transportation, city planning, all of those types of things. If I, uh, I can find a little bit more. The other thing you can do is add some media. If you have work that you've done in the past that you can share, if you have a news article, if you have a picture of you at a networking event, what visual evidence do you have that you can share? If you don't, maybe there's an HBR case study that you read recently that's awesome. Maybe there's a really cool survey or an industry report that you want to link to this and put it on your profile. There are ways that you can add media to help show your expertise um, than just creating your own. You can carry it too. I don't have any pictures of me out speaking or doing anything. That's okay. Let me get to this, but I yeah. think for myself, a lot of the most compelling water projects are unpaid because I've sought them out. I, yeah. They're more of what I'm passionate about. Totally. Um, so that could be part of the story. Absolutely. Yeah. I think if 73% of the U.S. people hate their jobs, I sure hope you're doing something outside of your work to make you happy. I have to. Right? Yeah. And so if you have nonprofit work or volunteer work, absolutely share it. Any one of my clients today where I was asking you questions, asking questions. He's like, oh yeah, I worked in the Obama administration. I'm like, when were we gonna get to that? He's like, well, it's kind of a side project. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's like the most interesting time. So yeah, absolutely. That's still work, right? That's still you showcasing your skill. Now, if it's way outside of the skills you're looking to show, you might want to think about how you board it. Maybe focus more on leadership or more on um, giving back or something like that. Great question. All right, so this is your summary. You really want to have one. Okay, the first three lines are what show up when people come to your profile. So make those interesting. Make them compelling. This is experience. Here's what I would say here. If you worked at a company that nobody knows about because it's small, which are frankly most companies, if it's not a Google or Facebook or whatever, put two sentences to describe what that company did or the size of the company or the type of market they were in. Give people context on how, where does this company fit in the narrative of that industry? And then you can put in there, what's your role? What are some of the things that you've done, right? Then you can include two if you want, just put a link to their website. Put a link to the last press release. Put a link to the company video. Look like you are an awesome brand ambassador that will make companies want to hire you more. This profile is still yours. No one has permission to ask you for your login and password, so it's still yours. But if you are really good at reflecting yourself and the organization you work at, I'd love to have people who do that. Okay. Yes? I keep thinking of good questions with this. I love it. <coughs> and you would urge us. I work for the government, and I almost want to downplay because I'm trying to move on from totally. from what I'm doing. Yeah. But the other thing is, I wonder how much I want to promote. Yeah. You know, the, the government as opposed to me as the individual. 
So it's really not about the It's a balancing thing. I think it's a balancing act. So for all of you, depending on what you want to do next, the way, to, the way I would approach that is if you think about your career in an arc and you go back and you look at your roles that you've had, um, and it could be at the same company that you got promoted, whatever that is. Go back and look at what are the skills that you want to highlight that gets you to your next opportunity and rewrite some of them, right? Go back and repurpose some of the descriptions you have. I even have one client, um, actually, I spoke at their, their company, and one of the people in the crowd came up and he's like, I have this sales manager title, but I'm not really in sales. I said, well, what is it you do? And this was from a past job. Because this looked really weird. This career looked more like this. <laughs> Most of ours do. Um, but he wanted to go back and update it so that it was more dark and it had a story and a through line. So as you think about your roles in the past, and painting it or setting you up so that when someone comes to your profile, it makes sense for the role you're looking at. Go back and reword some of these. I'm not saying change your title from director to VP. That's not what I mean. I really just mean, what are the skills you're highlighting in that experience section? See, and in line with that, not to get too individual, but my area has kind of plateaued. Uh, the visibility has gone up, but my, yeah. what I've been doing is plateaued. So I might have to re continue to repurpose that. Absolutely. Drawing from the well. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sir. So I'd like to do more speaking. How successful is LinkedIn in finding speaking engagements? Um, LinkedIn can be very successful in being found for speaking engagements. Okay. I don't use LinkedIn to go find speaking engagements. Yeah. What I will say, and I think I might, oh, sorry, let me, because I think, Tom or Brett asked me earlier. In your experience section, this is where you need to turn it off so that it doesn't notify people that you're looking for a job. If you're editing your current roles, it will tell people you have a new job. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you don't want to tell people. Mm -hmm. So the banner at the top, the summary, none of that will change and mm -hmm. send out a notification. But if you're updating your current experience, make sure this is turned off so that you don't tell everyone, I've got a job you definitely don't want them to have that impression. Okay, so where, I'm sorry, where do you turn that off? If you're in editing your experience, let me just show you real quick. I think a lot of the Yes, LinkedIn is sometimes pain. So if I go in here, so this is where it shows up at the bottom. So when you get a job and you need your new entry, then click yes and let everybody know you've got a new job. In the meantime, when you're going back and making changes based on what we're talking about, don't make sure that's turned off. It defaults to Is on. the default offer on? On. Oh, it's on. Okay. So this title, you can see I added keywords here. Founder, CEO, certified personal brand strategist for executives and entrepreneurs. If you are in an industry where um, you want to give a little more depth, to what you did, then feel free to edit your job title with some of those keywords. Don't stuff it with stuff, right? Pick good words. So if it is city planning, maybe you put architecture and design. Yes? Uh, so, so the next box up there is, uh, is that skills that you want to get into or in your field? So if you know that you want to get into a role that requires strategic planning, leadership and let's say enterprise wide stuff. Mm -hmm. Then you want to go back in here and update these to highlight where those skills show up. So and hopefully you can. Hopefully you can do that. Well and I, I too feel that I'm in the software testing line. I'm good at manual testing but I but the uh, the industry is going toward automated testing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I need to do to, to make myself more market. So then I would definitely be reading all the articles on it. Understand what are the implications for that room. What do you think the risks are? If they are going to move to automate it, how do they keep manual in parallel for a little while? How long should that be to yeah. make sure that they have credibility and integrity of the system? Right? So if you have a lot of expertise and knowledge and you think, well, 
everybody knows that. That's part of our problem. We think everybody knows what we know. But they don't, right? So you have to step back and think about, well, if I could sit down and have a conversation with somebody about this, how would I talk to them about here are the risks and the pros and cons, right, of moving to an AI approach? I would share articles on where is AI working, where is it not? I would call people and interview and say, hey, I'm really curious how you've transitioned to this. This is what I've done in the past, and I'm just doing research to understand how companies are making that migration. There are a lot of ways to create opportunities on LinkedIn, but you have to have, you have to sit down and, and really be innovative and creative in how you want to write it. Like in that case, I would say, go look at 10 companies who are making that move where you think they will. Start calling them and just ask them, hey, I'm just doing a survey. I'm curious to know how you're making a switch. I'm going to do a little report at the end. Let me know if you'd like to be anonymous and I'll send you the results. Right? Like there are ways to use LinkedIn to create opportunities for each of us that didn't exist before. Yeah. So following up on opportunities, what do you feel about privacy settings? What's the easiest way to be found by somebody? Um, that's a little bit of a complicated question because I'm fine with everybody knowing what's going on because mm -hmm. that's my job. I have a personal brand strategy, so I want people to know. But you can turn off privacy settings. You can set privacy settings so you don't get spammed mm -hmm. by salespeople. Some of those are a lot deeper now than they used to be. Uh, what's your concern specifically with privacy? Well, I want people to be able to find me, so I guess I'm not so concerned about spam per se. So do I, I want to keep mine on? Like whoever wants to find me, whether you're on LinkedIn or not, mm -hmm. you can find me. And a lot of times, privacy settings will be such that people on LinkedIn can find you, but if they're not on LinkedIn, they can't find you. One of the reasons LinkedIn is so powerful is when somebody Google's your name, which 90% of the time a recruiter will do that before they actually get mm -hmm. your resume. You need your LinkedIn profile to show up on Google. So you want your privacy settings to be as low as possible so that you show up to as many as possible. That's why LinkedIn is so powerful, because you get found first in Google. By the name like Jen Dalton, there is a New Jersey housewife named Jen Dalton. That is not helpful. But my LinkedIn profile, boom, right at the top. Right? So the other thing, yeah, go ahead. That's it. On the title that you, where you have founders, CEO, yeah. and all that, is it a few good enough program? Is that a good idea to put the program name on that line? It could be. It could be. It really depends if those keywords are going to help you. Um, I, sorry. Right. Yeah. I can't see your name, Jeff. Ace. What's your name? What's your name? Oh, me? Oh, Mike. I'm Mike. sorry. Yeah, I'm so wrong. <laughs> I got I, but I love it at the end. Because okay. mm -hmm. I get one second. I'm like, that's cool. Glad he's back. Right, so Mike, what I would do if you're trying to be a speaker, mm -hmm. add a speaker role in your profile if you've spoken. Okay. Okay, add a speaker role and put in what you talk about when you speak about. Yes, Stefan. So, Janet, you were talking about updating how many people have done things in LinkedIn. So, on this, how often should somebody update it? Like, Great question. Um, at least once a year, just put it on your calendar. It could be over the holidays. But if you've got projects that you're doing, update it more often. Do it once a quarter. Um, I'm going to come back to that. That's a great question. Thank you for that. How many of you have recommendations? And I mean, like, have gotten recommendations or given them. And they have got lots of recommendations or stuff. Okay. Ask for recommendations. Give recommendations. What I would encourage you to do is draft them ahead of time. Send it via email so they actually get it. If you send it via LinkedIn, they may not log in to see it. Hey, Lisa, I really liked working with you. As I'm going through my job transition, I've been told that LinkedIn is really important. I wanted to write a recommendation for you. Here's what I've drafted. Let me know what you think. Lisa's going to be like, wow, she really likes me. This is so cool. And she's given me a chance to edit her recommendation. All right, so saves you time. I know you're super busy, so I went ahead and wrote it. Conversely, if Lisa has worked with me, Jen, I really enjoyed our work together. I've been working on updating my LinkedIn profile. One of those things you might be interested to know is getting recommendations. Did you know that if you have five or more, you move up on search? I'm trying to build a couple. I drafted one for me to give her. If you want to tweak anything, feel free, but I know you're super busy. So I went ahead and drafted it for you. Here's a link to my profile. If you just click on this, It'll take you here, and that's how you submit your recommendation, right? So get recommendations and give recommendations. Recruiters typically don't want to see you just having a one-way street, or you only give, or you only get. Yes. Do you have a question? Okay. 
Sorry. You said, yeah. you said five or more. Let me move up and search. Mm -hmm. Is it a good idea to do that exchange? Like, here is what I direct is for you. And all right I and generally you. don't advocate a quick pro quo. Mm -hmm. Right? If they happen to want to give me one, fabulous. If they don't, that's totally cool. Right? Uh, I believe in karma. So if you do good for other people, it will come back. But I don't want people to feel like, well, you're only giving me one because you want one. Right? You really want it to be genuine. So I think if you say, I want to write you a recommendation, would you write one for me? That feels a little bit disingenuous. Even if you mean it as genuine, you don't want to come across the wrong way. A great question. The other thing people don't know are the skills. So skills, those keywords, drive you in search as well. You can edit these, you can delete them, you can rearrange them, but you want to pick your top three. If you don't pick your top three, the other ones that aren't right will keep showing up and other people will endorse you for them. And you may not want that. So this is definitely something, Stefan, to your question, where there are three places where people really should change these. One, they have to start out in the beginning of their career. Two, as soon as they go from doing to leading, you need to start changing because now you're in a management role, you want leadership or other skills, or if you switch industries. And you just need to update them completely. So where do you find that? I just want you to just confirm <clears throat> yep. that. So skills are at the bottom of your profile, although it depends. You can always move them around. Uh, mine's kind of long, so I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm just letting you know. Um, but it's down here further. Just takes a minute. Let's see if I can. Yeah, right Recommendations, skills. So you can click add a new skill if you don't have it anywhere. Right? Let's say you have you want to add pharma or pharmaceuticals and you didn't have it on your profile visa, you would do that here. You could also click edit, and you would need to unpin these and repin the ones you want to move them up. You can drag and drop these hamburgers to move them if you even want to reorder them for a second or third. Okay. And so these are recommendations. So yes, you can ask for a recommendation here, but to be honest, I would go and just email them directly. And then the other thing you can do, I've had some people say, Jen, I've got this recommendation and I don't really like it. Can I get rid of it? Yes, you can hide some. So if there are recommendations that aren't relevant to the role you're looking for, or they just weren't really written well, then you can go in and hide those. Or you can ask for a revision. But that's why I say draft them up front. You want to make people have to work to write your recommendation. They're already being nice enough to do that. Now the next one I'm going to speak to are accomplishments. Sorry, Jen? Yeah. What is the difference between this? Recommendations and the, the given? Skill? Skills or endorsements? No, correct. Oh, given and those are ones I've written. Because I'm oh, a nice person. Okay. So I've received 33, I've given 27. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So I need to catch up a little bit. I don't hobble behind. Okay. I try mm -hmm. to keep them balanced out. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the skills being endorsed, uh, when, you, when you have like a lot of endorsements mm -hmm. for skills that are not passive or whatever, and you add some new ones, yeah. do you, can, can you transfer? You can't do any of that. So, so what do you do? I would them? delete some if they're not relevant, right? Or I would add ones that would be more relevant. And sometimes people will add two or, or even a couple that are similar. Marketing, marketing strategy, um, information technology, computer software development. Um, so you might want to add a couple that are similar because people search things differently, right? I would look at the job titles of the roles you're looking at, look at the words that are in those, the keywords, and use some of those. So uh, those people that may have yep. endorsed some skills that you're now removing, yep. is they're not going to know. No, they're not going to know, but I mean, you can like, reach out and say, hey, you know, I'm a big, you know, blah, blah. Um, I removed some skills to bring my skills up to date. Yeah. You know, now you can endorse these. So skills. what I would recommend is Ask people in your 40 plus group, or if you have a network where you sit down, start with a group of people that you're close with, LinkedIn over lunch, and you all go write each other recommendations that are real, and you go write each other endorsements, click for endorsements that are real. Um, if there are people that you trust in your inner circle that you don't think they'll mind that you ask them, go ask them. But you want to be careful how much you're asking for. You haven't been giving. That's all. That's just my personal philosophy. 
One of the sections that's different is accomplishments. This is not part of your normal profile. You have got to add this. So um, this blue box up here where it says add profile section, that is where you would go to add in your accomplishments. Now accomplishments have a lot of things in it. Publications, certifications. So Tom, if you're getting an AI certification or something like that, I mean, that I don't know if there actually is, but I'm sure there's some certification, then you would put it here. If any of you are getting certifications to update your profile, you could put it here. Yes? One of the problems I've found with certifications, and I don't think they fixed it yet, is you, don't, you can't change the order. So they only show like a couple on the, on the main screen. And right now, the, the certification I would like to promote is not the one that shows up. But I don't want to remove certifications to force yeah. it. Because they put them all here, right? And they pop in recommendations too, that changing the order. And, and uh, uh, there are ways around it, but it's complicated. Yeah, it's a little cumbersome. It's not the most intuitive platform or helpful. And that's not gotten better since Microsoft bought it from a job search standpoint. From a business development standpoint, there are mm -hmm. some things that are better. So what I would encourage you to do, um, the, the couple of places I would focus on. If you're taking coursework, you could add it here if it adds to your credibility. If, you're, if you've gotten an honor and award, please put it in here now. It's not the time to be shy. Projects. This is another really good one where you could go in and create project names based on the roles you're looking for. If you do organizational transformation and you've got that somewhere in your resume, make it a project and go write four or five sentences about it because those words all matter in your profile. If you're trying to showcase, Ken, like you are different skills, then you might say a government project differently Right? You might not use acronyms, and you might use more private sector words. Right? So just think about what would you put in here for certifications, for projects, languages, if you've written anything. Obviously, I have my book, but if you've been in journals or publications or articles, capture that here, too. So again, this section is not in your profile, but I think it's a really important one, this is another place where if you're involved in any organization, so you can add this here. There is a volunteer section, of course. If you do volunteer work, Ken, like you mentioned, <coughs> I would put it in here. If you are a very aggressive, uh, I don't mean to say it in that way. Uh, if you're an intentional volunteer, very intentional. If you're a board member. Yeah, that's exactly. What you I'm have to put it in your experience up top. Right. Absolutely a thousand percent. And that's not. Possible, but 100% of the time, if you're even if you're just a very active volunteer or member, but you're out, you're there all the time doing projects, put that here, and then put an associated project in the yeah, project. Yeah, that's, that's what I have because actually, in some ways, those are more valuable than my job. Uh, absolutely, and a lot of companies want to know that you do volunteer work. They want to know what you're passionate about. So yes, I would absolutely add that here. And for some of you who may be wanting to give back and add different projects to your resume, find a board and go join it. Or do volunteer work and try to work on a project or an initiative to build your skill sets. If you're new to the market, that's a great way to do that. Because although LinkedIn is powerful, you still need to actually go talk to people. Right? And meet people and get introduced. It's not the end all be all. But it's a great place to start. Jen? Yeah. When you were just saying, if you're um, volunteering, yep. put it up front in experience. If it's a meaty so volunteer role, okay. yes. Okay. If it's like you go to the gala once a year, no. put it in the right. bottom in the volunteer section. Right. Okay. But if you're going to meetings, if you're working on a project like volunteer recruitment or outreach or fundraising right. or something like that, and it's a skill that you want to highlight, and maybe you weren't able to do it. Like one of the reasons I joined the organization I'm part of six years ago was because I wanted to learn more about budgeting. Mm -hmm. And so I joined the board, I know a lot more about budgeting, but I also became VP and I also became president of the board, so you have to be careful. Um, so yeah, that was six years ago. But it's given me a lot of credibility and I've learned a ton. It's just a totally different role. And the good thing about doing board work is you have a totally different network, right? So look at organizations, look at who's on the board, 
look if they're going to be good for your network. Those are important. You have to be passionate about the organization, otherwise don't be on the board. But there are some really great career things. Um, leave off your high school. I have had some people put high school on LinkedIn. Please don't. Leave it off. Okay? Don't put high school. Um, yes. So we talked about this, accomplishments. This is just evidence. Show me evidence of who you are and what you can do. Don't make me guess on how good you are. Just communicate it clearly and confidently. You don't need to brag. Personal branding is not personal bragging. But if you've actually led a project, then put, I've led a project. Right? Don't be, don't hit back. So do not ever, don't send a connection request without a personalized note. We talked about that. Do not sell on the first note. Don't ask for a job on the first note. I really think you should send a report or send an article or if their company recently won an award, which there's tons of awards going on right now, the Washington Business Journal and others, send a note congratulating them. Hey, I saw you were 50, you know, fastest growing company in the VC market. Congratulations, right? Um, so just think about different ways to do that. Do give shout outs. So I'm going to go through some frameworks for how do you have visibility. So judging myself, these are the five things I looked for to get more visibility with. Awareness, if people don't know about you, they won't be able to find you, right? How are you attracting opportunities? So these are for people who do know, who, who don't know about you, how do you get them to know about you? How do you attract opportunities? How do you stay in touch with your current people? I had um, one friend of mine who reached out every quarter to everyone that she was connected with which is really ambitious. I have almost 3,000 connections. I don't think I could do that. But I really liked the notion and the idea. How do you stay in touch with the people you're connected with so that they feel like an authentic relationship? Talent and then be a thought leader. So I'm gonna go through some of these. How many of you are scared to death of talking about yourself? I don't know what I because that's not actually true. <laughs> okay. So for those of you who are, who think LinkedIn is really about talking about yourself, it's not. I call this framework four eyes that are not about me. You want to give them information. Share an article. You want to influence. Share a comment or a perspective you have based on an article. You want to inspire. I don't see a ton of inspirational quotes on LinkedIn, but you can share an inspirational story or a video or something cool on an industry or the market. Ignite is more of a grassroots thing, but that's when you want to be more provocative. Most people don't want to do that. But if you want to really ignite a conversation, that's something you can do. So I have a blog I'm getting ready to publish on LinkedIn. I've already pushed it out on my website about what we can learn from the NFL owners and Nike. That's a bit more production. That's why I haven't published it yet. So I'm like, yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, how do you respond to your articles? Awesome. Sure. So, um, Let me ask a more perfect question. When you say respond to articles, do you mean when you see an article that you like, what do you do with it? Uh, yeah, someone that's making okay. public, public too. Yep. <coughs> so one of the things that you can do, and you guys, um, you'll see this on your profile once you start doing it. So this is a great example. So this um, post, so this is called a post. Same thing you have on LinkedIn or Facebook and Twitter. Um, Tim Brown, who's the CEO of IDEO, wrote this little post um, about a book written by Warren Berger, and it's about asking great questions. And so I shared this and added a comment. So that would be how you would do that. There's a little button down here, like, comment, share. If you like a lot of stuff, that's not helping you any. It's a waste of time. If you're sitting there liking it, then you should comment. If you're sitting there commenting, then you should share it and comment, right? It'll take a few more seconds and make a much bigger impact. So in this particular case, I shared, I read the article, first of all, please read the article, I'll share the <laughs> right. I read the article about the book, I haven't read the book yet, I've got it at home, get ready to read this weekend. Are you a questionologist? Love this concept, asking questions can change every conversation and experience. Live in the inquiry, can I wait to read Warren Berger, so I tagged him using the at sign and typing his name, and he came up and I clicked on it. Warren Berger's book, The Book of Beautiful Questions, ASAP. 
Hashtags are coming on LinkedIn, so but I try not to be ridiculous with them. Hashtag leadership and then flush models. But I share this from his post. Right? And those are my thoughts. I would say try to stick to three lines because that's what people see and read without having to click more. Yes. So how do you feel about people who um, who kind of find, I guess, a quote within the article and then put it under their heading? Um, sometimes people use quotes and, you know, indicating that they quoted someone else. Sometimes they don't. But, you know, I guess, you know, they don't really know what to say, so they just take yeah. I think Have if you you're in a before? comment, it should be an actual comment of your own brain, right? Um, and have a response. So the one thing I tell my clients is telepathy is not strategy, right? You can't just sit here thinking, please think I'm awesome, please think I'm, that doesn't work. You actually have to show them. What are the two ways you show that you're credible? That's not a rhetorical question. <laughs> two ways. Hmm? She display it. How do you display it? Yes, achievements, but how do you display it? Demonstrate. Speaking, Speaking. Writing. Writing. writing, yeah. Right, so on LinkedIn, that's what you're doing here. Yeah. Someone might see your comment and go, well, I really like how they thought about that. I want to talk with them more. Or just the fact that you took the time when everybody else is liking to actually comment and share. Right? So that's one example. Right, you need to get back on the slide. So what do you mean when you say comment and share? Because if you comment, then it automatically goes out to all of your connections. I share it on purpose, and then I write the comment, because I want to be able to tag this person and change how that my comment isn't embedded at the bottom, but that it's at the top. So I share and comment. So how, how do, if you automatically do a share, does your comment move up from, from the bottom you there? You have to or? share first and then comment. Okay. The comment space will come up and we get shared. You see a comment. Right. So if you click share, like if I wanted to click share, I can comment here. Right. Okay. And if I said, you know, at Jen Dalton, my name comes up and I'm tagging me. That's how you tag a person. That's how you tag a company. So if you're sharing an article, you're like wasting precious free visibility if you're not tagging the author of the article or tagging the organization itself. Okay, can you come so <laughs> it's funny. Uh, like I said, the mechanics, I don't know if there is a place to go for the mechanics. If, uh, you are here, girlfriend. So, <laughs> so then the question is valid. I'm sorry to no, no, okay. So loved hearing, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about myself, because it's just not, it's a no-brainer. So that's a post. This is a post, right? So I can say blah, 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 right? But, but I share this article. So I obviously wouldn't write that with this because it doesn't go together. But if you saw something, or let's say you took a picture of someone speaking at a conference, mm -hmm. you could post that picture and write great speech by blah, 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 person, right? right? That's a post. Yeah. That's a post. That's a post. Right? Yeah. So, um, and then I share. there are a couple of different types of activities. So once you start doing things, This is all of my activity, comment, like, blah, blah. These are my actually actual posts. These are the short versions, which you just saw one of them. Here's another one. There's a conference this Wednesday. I'm posting about that because I'm speaking at it. Um, this is 40 plus. I was talking about 40 plus and how much I love speaking here. And then there's an article. Articles are a blog. So if you all feel brave, this would be an awesome thing to do. Especially, Tom, like your example about what companies need to think about when transitioning to AI. For example, five things they need to do or ask five questions. So this was five reasons to join a nonprofit board. Right, and so I wrote this, eight or 10 paragraphs, not a big deal, but it's free marketing and it's a cause I care about and I believe in. So if you're not sure what a blog looks like, I do have a template for that on my website. It's free, you can just grab it. Um, how to write a blog for LinkedIn. Yeah, Carol. Um, I just met with a mentor, and he said for social media, uh, you have to images. That's the only thing that people absolutely are pictures are worth a zillion words. Yeah. But there's a lot of words in LinkedIn. So does, is that is a matter? Of so you'll notice for a lot of my art, my posts, they always have an image. 
very rarely do I ever put something without a picture. And you can always add a picture if one doesn't show up with the link that you put in there to an article. But you just have to make sure you have rights to use that picture. So yeah. my, my um, way of thinking is why is it that, because I've read that it takes one second, you have to grab someone's attention in one second. So three to six seconds is pretty small. Though. Why would I spend an hour writing an article for something? That, that's my kind of like resistance. Sure. To writing yeah, yeah. I love pushback. Bring it on. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so going back to what I said earlier, the only way to let people know if you know something is speaking or writing. Obviously, if you have certifications and degrees, that's helpful. But I actually want to know how someone thinks. What do they think about? culture or blah, 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 whatever field you're in, right? So blogging is a way to do that. And now they say videos. Blogging is that a good picture and video. Absolutely. Video. So you can do video. Do a minute video, video or less. Okay. Do a 30 second video. Okay. It's a lot more forgiving now to do video. It doesn't have to be perfect quality. So I have my handy dandy video stand. Although it's really important to have a professional videographer. Thank you so much for videotaping in the back. But if I'm feeling like I want to do a native video, which is just a video you do on your phone, right? I can record on my phone, record me. I can use iMovie and add my title pictures. It's not very hard. Um, but most people, uh, death, taxes, no, death, speaking, right? Video is like the third on the list of what they're afraid to do. So, but if you have a blog, that's awesome. If you want to do a video, that's even better. Right? And one of the things I did when I first did video was I did three videos. One on what is personal branding, because it was a new concept at the time. Who am I and what's my process? And the five mistakes you're making on LinkedIn. Because I knew I was going to write that blog. So I took that video, embedded it in the blog, and that blog post had 65,000 views. So the reason blogging is important, the reason video is important, the reason sharing is important, is you have to be seen. But you want to do it in a way that's breaking through the noise, not making noise makers. That's why you also need to add your thoughts. Because they're unique and they're yours and they're special and they're different. Okay? All right. Jen? Yep. Before you move on, I do have a question about rights, the picture rights. Yes. Can you, you must have the rights. Yes. But can you explain? Can you elaborate a little bit about it? Sure. Yes. So if you are looking for photos, yes. do not just go Google a photo and grab it and use it. That is against the law generally. There are search features in Google where you can see what's available for everyone to use. Right? There's no use restrictions. In general, I use Adobe or I use um, StockSnap.io as a free one. Um, there are a couple of free photo sites where you can download pictures for blogs. It changes between if you're being paid for something or if it's free. As in, if I were being paid to speak or being paid to do client work, I have to have different rights for my photos. So, so totally different from your personal pictures. And let's yes. say you grab something, um, let's say my husband, I will take uh, one of his pictures, but we divorce, and we, I pick up one of his pictures. Do I still need his right? You have to, absolutely. And okay. you have to credit him. And it just depends on the arrangement. Um, I'm not an IP attorney, so I can talk okay. to an IP attorney. Um, but yes, there are lots of very strict rules around that. It's just like um, politicians can't play music at an event if they don't have permission from the artist. They have to have permission, okay. right? They'll still do it, but it's not, it's not actually appropriate. Okay. It's illegal, right? Um, but there are websites where you can go do that. Just make sure you're researching. This is just another one where I tagged a company. I launched my new website, so I was getting a shout out to the company that did the website. This is one a friend of mine. So this was a quote I heard at a networking event from my friend Mark. It says, try replacing I'm sorry with thank you. Next time you go to apologize for anything. I'm sorry I'm late because thank you for your patience. Game changer. Thank you, Mark Silverman. He had 3,700 views, and that was a couple months ago. I'm sure it's even higher now. That was free. Now, I made this little fancy dancy thing on Canva, which I told you about earlier. I cannot tell you how many people have been like, still, I had somebody talk to me Friday about how they write their emails differently now. Instead of saying, I'm sorry, I don't know this email. Anyways, so share stuff. This is Richard Branson, share something from a CEO, right? The search, so this is a really big deal, and I wanna make sure we have time for questions, so I'm gonna wrap up. 
LinkedIn search is huge. If you are going to use search, it uses Boolean logic. So you want to use quotation marks around your phrases or your words. So in this particular case, I was looking for director and quotation marks and information technology and quotation marks. It will pull back any people, jobs, or content. So one of the things, if you're going to go write a blog, go see what's already been written about. You can do search and then go look at content and see, well, who else is writing about it? What have they said? So I would go look up AI or however you would phrase it and see what's being talked about. Because I can also help you just find articles, right, and share. So you're not wasting hours. So we talked about the three circles. Just think about what do you want to do a couple times a week? Follow up with somebody. Maybe write a recommendation for somebody. Maybe share an article. Do a shout out. Share a community event. Think about what you can share and just ease into it. I don't want you to run a marathon. Okay, no LinkedIn marathons. Just baby steps into it. Does that make sense? All right, so let me stop here. Um, I, I would love to answer questions. I'm going to switch back to the purple because we have about five minutes left. One of the things we did not talk about was groups. Just like you might share an article or a post, I would also go look at the groups that you want to be a part of. You should look at groups of your peers and groups that the people who might hire you are in or those industries. You can get a lot of groups, over 50 groups. I would just ask you to think about why. <laughs> so pick a couple that you want to put your feet in and that are active and that have good engagement and chime in with those. Um, so anyways, questions for me. I know I covered a lot. Like I said, I will share your slides as long as I have your business cards. What questions do you have? Right. I, I know it was very, but how much time do you have? 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes a day. I try not to confess that openly, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's 10 minutes because I just don't have time, right? right? I mean, okay. and every once in a while, I might skip a day, and that's okay. The world, the world will continue to spin. Um, but I do try to do one thing a day. And I try to look ahead for the week or the month and just look at what's coming up that I want to give a shout out on. You know, I've got a networking event coming up, or I've got a fundraiser like Thursday night, I've got a game up for the nonprofit I'm on. So just look ahead and plan ahead so you're not staring at your screen going, what should I do? <laughs> Because the first time I did that trying to write a blog, two hours later, what do you think I had? Nothing. Zero. Big fat white screen. Okay? Yes. Um, can you reuse the materials that you've done in the past? I see it's becoming more rapid. So, if, let's say you posted something yeah, yeah. six months ago. So, I think, so just to repeat the question, can you reuse content? Absolutely. Okay. If I wrote a blog, like the five mistakes um, people are making on LinkedIn, they're still making those. <laughs> I could take that article and say, so, this was five years ago, and we're still here, right? And it was funny, because I looked at the blog wondering, would it be out of date again? And it's not. It's all still relevant. I was like, ah. Um, so, yeah, reach your content. And sometimes you can word it in a way that's really clever, right? You can say, look, nothing's changed, or wow, this one thing has changed dramatically, right? Look at the industry trends from five years ago. Look at what they are now, right? So, absolutely. You want to be efficient. So Google Alerts are your friends. Set up Google Alerts on the topics you care about. It'll send you an email every day on news. Grab one of those articles, post them out, right? Um, you're yeah, um, you want to send, when somebody Google to yeah. your profile, LinkedIn profile, show up. Yeah. Yeah. And um, my question is, how to change LinkedIn address for your profile? Because if you just Google, it will be like a whole long euro. Yeah. So how to change it? So you definitely want to have your personal email on LinkedIn as well as a professional one. Because if you, especially if you leave your job and you can't access that email anymore, then that's a problem. Um, so you do want to make sure that you have your profile updated. What I would also recommend is if any of you have two profiles, because I've seen that, 
then consolidate them, and LinkedIn can help you with that. It's a little bit of an onerous process, but you should do it. Because the worst thing is when someone searches for your name and you have multiple profiles. That happened to me, and I'm gonna be quick on this one. How do I reset my password? Because um, it was one for the work, and yeah. one was private. So what you're gonna to need to do mm -hmm. is if you go into LinkedIn search or to help, you'll need to scan a picture of your ID so they can verify that it's you and give you control back over the account. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, related to that, somehow I got different accounts tied to different emails. Uh, I keep going back to my first one, even though it's, you know, it's not so the So you have multiple accounts? Yeah, I don't even know how I, how that came Because somebody be. said, go make an, a LinkedIn profile, and you're like, okay, and then you come make it up. Um, so I would just look at the ones that have the best connections it's going to ask you which ones do you want to consolidate and so you need to be able to know this profile should come into this profile and, and is there there's a consolidate option okay because i guess there I is but it's not there's not like an easy button for it okay. you have to go find it and help and if you just put consolidate linkedin accounts i remember that linkedin sent me email Yes. Then ask which account because they have several emails. Yeah, yeah. And this says which account you want to link. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you whatever you want. So the emails again, as long as you have a couple of emails associated, you can ask you for primary. Mm, yeah. So as long as your primary is not the only one, and that only one is your job email that you will no longer have access to if you don't have a job here, you have to add your personal email and switch it to be your primary. So these are two other tools. So Google Alerts, I talked about Content Gems and BuzzSumo. There are free options. They will also, and the thing I like about um, both of these, but especially BuzzSumo, it'll tell you which things are in your space and how often they've been shared. Okay. So you can get a sense of what's exciting or interesting to people. And there are a number of easy names, BuzzSumo. Those are websites, yeah, BuzzSumo and Content Gems. So you, you would want to change, like I've got three email addresses on mine, right? So you would want to go in and just make sure you don't have only your person email. Okay. I know I've given you a, a lot of information. I hope it was helpful. I'm happy to take one last question. But if we're, not one last question, Frank. So what are you going to do to be identified by recruiters? Your keywords. Right? You have to have the right keywords and you have to engage. So reactive and proactive. <laughs> have right keywords so you can be found. Know what those keywords are. If you know 10 different jobs you're looking at, hopefully there's some keyword similarity, right? Then you want to do that. If you have a career like this where it's kind of all over the place, go back and update these and make sure they really have the keywords that you're looking for. And that's where you want to look at your metrics to know if you're showing up in search. So you have to have a profile to have your odds go up that you're going to be found. But then you also have to engage. Um, the Washington Business Journal just published the top executive recruiting firms in DC, top 50 or 25. Connect with recruiters. They are okay with that. Submit your resume online at their websites. Ordinary, I know, does that. So you have to really be proactive and go out there and connect, right? Even if they're not looking, go out and connect with them on LinkedIn. Just don't harass them. Right. But if you reach out and say, I'm really interested in this role, I see you're an executive recruiter, I'm sure you're very busy, but I just wanted to reach out and let you know here's my resume, should you ever have a need of someone with these skills? Washington Business Journal. I have the printout, um, I don't know if they listed it online, but maybe I can email to them. Thank you, everybody. You're wonderful. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you.